power. Where's his power coming from? Satan. So the power we're talking about here, lastly, looks like it's pointing to the spiritual. It's not just simply talking to some kind of um, electric cable. He plugs this in and this image of the beast can suddenly speak because it's got the power now to do so. It's talking spiritual power. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So in other words, he's giving this image of the beast um, a soul, so to speak. That's how it looks. He's giving it a soul. He's other words, in other words, he's giving it an anointing. John the Baptist um, anointed Jesus. When Jesus was baptised, he saw the Holy Spirit coming down um, in bodily form like a dove and uh, enlightening upon Jesus. What if this uh, false prophet gives power as coming down from Satan it lights upon this image of the beast? In other words, its power will be coming from Satan himself. Jesus was then led of the spirit into the wilderness. But then this spirit that comes down upon the image of the beast will both speak. Suddenly it's given life. When God breathed into Adam's nostrils, Adam was, was, uh, was, uh, was created of the dust. And you see, if you get a picture there of Adam, he's created of the dust, so you have a body, a fully grown man in Adam, created by God, created of the dust. He wasn't quite alive yet. Then God breathes into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And then man becomes a living soul. In other words, he's become both body and spirit. And therefore you picture Adam, he's lying on the floor, let's say, God's created him. He's lying there in a form of a sleep. And he's got no life in him, so to speak. He hasn't got a spirit. And suddenly God breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. So in other words, spiritual life. So in other words, his spirit coming from the very symbolic, let's say, breath of God. We're not talking physical air breath here. We're talking spiritual air. So God, in this same sense, if not symbolic sense, breathes into Adam's nostrils. And Adam becomes a living soul. In other words, his spirit, his soul, his spirit comes from God. And now he's a living soul. He's both body and he's spirit. So this um, false prophet, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So he's not only uh, a creation of man, he's also now being given life, spiritual life. Is he being given a soul? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak. No doubt Adam started to speak when he suddenly, um, God breathed into his nostrils, breath of life. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. Suddenly this image of the beast sp speaks, it's got a soul. And caused as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So in other words, in worshipping this image of the beast, you're worshipping um, the very Antichrist, the son of Lucifer. In other words, worshipping the very Antichrist, the son of Lucifer, you'll be worshipping Satan. Jesus said, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, Jesus, Jesus saying this, shall receive him that sent me. It'll be the same with this Antichrist. And he that has power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast may speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he, this false prophet, caused them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. In other words, it looks like a symbolic mark, that's how it looks, that's how it is. And that man, that no man might buy or sell. Now here's the world economy in the hands of this uh, false prophet. So this pro false prophet um, paving the way for the very Antichrist, getting the world to create this image of the beast, sets up this image of the beast. This image of the beast can, can both speak. And this image of the beast, that gets the image of the speak, um, speaking here. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So in other words, that looks like a symbolic mark. And there you have uh, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, which kind of makes you wonder if that's what those two, two horns symbolise. You've got the rich and poor. 
uh, three in bond, small and great, two horns, two ends of the spectrum, but a whale where there's rich people and poor people. How do you bring a world into um, into an, an order where everybody's happy, where there's peace and safety for all? When you have rich and poor, when you have small and great, where you have free and bond, how do you bring them all into peace and safety and security? How do you use um, peace and safety and security as a bait to bring the whole world into a new order and make everybody happy? And he calls the faith almost small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, say, but he that had the mark. It's like a symbol of the devil's name, of the evil Antichrist name. Or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. In other words, the mark is the name of the beast, symbolic of the name of the beast, some kind of symbol, if you wonder, of the name of the beast. Um, the name of the beast or the number of his name. In other words, the number of his name being here is wisdom. Let me understand and count the number of the beast which is the number of man. His number is 600, three score and six. This is the mark of the beast, 600, three score and six, which is the name of the beast, which again is the number of his name. So rather than receive everything uh, now for the name of Jesus, as we should have done if we all received Jesus, suddenly everything uh, we get, we have to do it through this name of the very... Antichrist. In other words, he becomes the Messiah and Saviour, the Anointed One, and the world worshipping uh, this Antichrist by worshipping this image of the beast. This um, being set up by the very false prophet that the whole world will look to and listen to because he, the false prophet, is going to be given power from Satan and he's going to exercise all of the power of the first beast before him and demonstrate to the world all these great miracles. He is indeed a man, because this same man will be, um, when in the great battle of Armageddon, when this happens, will be cast alive, it says, into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So indeed, um, both, the, both the beast and the false prophet, in fact, are eventually cast, cast straight into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So where did it all get them? These are, in, in fact, two um, men, two individuals. Some argue that all of this is symbolic. But clearly, they are both men. The man of sin and Antichrist. And this very uh, man, false prophet, that comes up out of the earth. An earthly man that speaks as anointed by Satan himself. Demonstrating all the power of the first beast before him being the Antichrist. And these two, it says, eventually um, cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So praise Jesus.